hello everyone. What you see in front of you is my Simplex 2001-8032 Repack Fire Alarm Panel. It's a uh, pretty old Simplex panel from the mid-80s, and I've got this nice little demo board that I have set up for it. I made a video of this panel a few years ago, but it's not a very good video. It was recorded on my old iPhone, and, you know, I didn't really know what I was really talking about. So I just figured I would make this video tonight just to kind of show the layout. I don't believe it's changed since when I last made the video. I know the board hasn't changed. Um, you can see right here I still got the uh, 2903 9005 light plate in the 2901-9806 horn, as well as this Simplex 4251-20. Um, these are very historically accurate pieces that you would see on a system like this, which is why I chose these. It's also why I don't plan to ever change the devices that are on this system. So taking a look inside, I'm going to go ahead and show all of the cards a little bit more up close because this is a fairly unique configuration for this system. Um, starting on the left, obviously we have the main system control card. Um, you'll see it has a few troubles on it. It's just got a general system trouble on it. Um, I have not been able to figure out that is. It's probably batteries or just some of these zone troubles that have come up like I don't I haven't cleared these troubles yet um, I cleared the troubles on all of these other zone cards but you know that that's just not something I figured out yet um, it's got the piezo which as you can see is very loud it's got the lamp test functionality um, as well as you can obviously reset it which resetting basically just drops the power to the card bus and it clears everything. Um, starting on the left, we have the first dual zone card. This one is in the vertical configuration. As you can see like that, it's got the disconnect switches as well as the uh, alarm test switches. Two zones, alarm and trouble, pretty standard. Um, this third card right here is actually a four wire smoke detector card. Um, what the disconnect switch would be used for is um, this would be non-resettable power provided for four wire smoke detectors so in order to reset them you would have to flip this switch up to disconnect which it does flash trouble and you flash uh, turn it back and it's got a uh, fuse in it as well the fourth card right here is the all famous 2001 March time card as indicated by the green LED and obviously it says March time rate on it so this 2001 is configured to do the 90 beats per minute March time which is pretty awesome um, going on to the right we have a second dual zone card as you can see here same switches it's got the disconnect and alarm test switches on it um, and obviously alarm trouble zone 3 and 4 um, next card over is the signal card. So this is your NAC cards, basically. Um, it's got a trouble on circuit two. Um, I believe that's because that's the circuit that has the horn on it. So it's just not resistored out. I thought that fuse was blown for a second. It's a little bit concerned. I guess um, if it was blown, I could just put a new fuse in it. Not that big of a deal, but it looked like it might have been blown. Um, anyway, dual zone card, so it gives you two knacks. Um, right here, this is a relay card. Um, it's not functional, but there are two relays mounted to this card, so that's pretty neat. Um, not much else to say on that. And finally, we have another dual zone card, both of which have troubles on them. Uh, these aren't connected to anything. In fact, the only zone that's wired up is zone one, 
which goes to the 425120, obviously. Um, but there's nothing else on this board. I've been thinking about adding like a heat detector or something to this loop right here, but I don't have any time accurate simplex detectors to put there, so I just leave it empty for right now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by testing this setup here, um, just to demonstrate the fire alarm operation of this panel. And then I'm going to take all the cards out and just kind of show them off and show the motherboard and explain a little bit more about the system. So, I think we'll start by pulling the only pull station on this board, this Simplex 4250-120. So here we go. One thing that is kind of interesting about this system is that when it gets an alarm, it actually doesn't, um, well, it clears the troubles on here. So, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of interesting. One other neat little quirk about this system is that if I reset it, it actually doesn't set off the uh, horn again. However, we still have an alarm because we haven't reset the pull station yet. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Get my keys out. Find my simplex key, wherever it is on my key ring. There it is. Pop it open. There you can see the uh, old school simplex logo in there. Trying to focus. There it is. Pretty neat. So we'll close that back up and reset it. And now, actually, before I reset, I'm going to uh, demonstrate the uh, alarm test switch. So we'll do zone three. And you'll notice that when I flip another switch up, it does alarm. So we'll flip that back to normal. And now we'll reset. So we'll push and hold for three seconds. And it's reset. So now what I'm going to show is uh, I'm going to disconnect zone one with this pull station. And now when we open it up, nothing happens. We pull it. If we go look back at the panel, nothing happens. But you'll notice that as soon as I flip it down, it goes off. So, reset that. And uh, just because I feel like it, I believe this is the circuit that has the horn on it, just to make sure. We'll, we'll uh, listen to the relays in this panel click as it pulses march time. Ah, come on. There it is. That was weird. So you'll see it's clicking out the march time, but since I took out the uh, fuse for the knack, the horn does not sound. You'll notice when I plug it in, it'll start going. All right. So, as I said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this dress plate off and show you how this is disassembled. So I'll see you in just a minute. I'm going to uh, pause the video and shut the panel down. All right, so now I have the system powered off, and I'm going to show you how to get into this panel. It's pretty simple. Uh, you start with these six little screws on here. Um, and then these, uh, these metal brackets come out. The uh, metal brackets just kind of help hold the cards in place. So 
So it's just these six little screws. So now that the metal brackets are out, I'll go ahead and start pulling cards out. They literally just unplug. They are uh, actually quite similar to like if you had expansion cards in your PC, like you had a graphics card or whatever. It's a uh, similar concept to that. There's a motherboard and lots of expansion slots. Eight to be exact on this board. But like here's your relay card and your signal card. Something to note is that you absolutely never take cards out of a system that is plugged in and powered on. But like, you know, this is, uh, it's pretty neat because this is older technology. You can see, um, very analog, lots of diodes and resistors and looks like a couple of, uh, logic chips probably, but fairly simple. Like this is something I could probably recreate if I had a few good pictures of it, you know. Very interesting stuff. So we're just going to finish pulling the uh, cards out. Be careful not to damage them. Um, and finally, the system control card. And in my opinion, the system control card is one of the most interesting cards because it is the most complex. But even the control card is still relatively simple by modern standards. It's just a few relays um, and then a lot of diodes and capacitors and resistors and fun stuff like that. So now with all the cards out, we can see into the back of the uh, you can see into the back of the panel. Now I think I got a flashlight in here that I might be able to use. Without going too out of frame, here we are. Let's see how well this shows up. Ah, that's pretty good actually. So what you'll see in here is that it's really just like a. Uh... Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. But you'll see we have. Two sets of terminals, eight cards, card slots. We've got some power supply stuff going on up here. Really, there isn't too much to this panel. One thing I have been fortunate about is I haven't had to replace the uh, filtering capacitor. Um, it still seems to be running pretty strong. But what's interesting about these panels is that um, these jumpers I put in here, um, me and a uh, buddy of mine at the time, we uh, figured out, we used uh, the New Age server alarm video of his 2001 to figure out how to lay out these cards and lay out these jumpers so that we could do March time. Because um, this panel didn't originally have the March time card in here. But what you'll see is that each of these slots, each card gets six of these terminals, like so. So there's 48 terminals and each card get six of them so it's a fairly straightforward layout it's actually not too hard to figure out once you get the gist of it and uh, honestly one of my favorite things about this panel is that besides the control card in the far left um, you can just drop in as many signal cards or zone cards as you have um, terminals on this board or uh, card slots in this board and it just works uh, it doesn't matter how you do it you don't have to do any jumpers or anything Obviously, if you're using more advanced cards, you'll have to do that. But, you know, honestly, there isn't too much going on inside this, uh, inside this motherboard. So, I'm going to plug all the cards back in, one by one. I'm going to go in the opposite order that I started. So, it's the same kind of thing. Just go one card at a time. It's kind of like the expansion cards in your computer. They just plug in. the order that I had these cards in here. Uh, there we are. Kind of hard to do this with one hand, but we'll get it.
there we go. Then March time. And then the other zone card. And then the signal card. Relay card, as I said, just two relays. And finally, this zone card. Now I'm going to uh, stop the video again because these plates are a bit hard to put on with one hand. But I'll see you in just a second. So there it is, the system is all put back together and uh, ready for more display and uh, action. So one thing I did want to show is this tag right here. It's got some information on the system. Um, as you can see, uh, written on there, manufacture date was November 16th of 1982. The installation date was December 18th, 1984. So uh, this system's been around for quite some time. You'll see the model is 2001-3080 is the type. Uh, the ID number is 2001-8021. So as I said, this is the repack model. It's quite a bit simpler to work with. But yeah, there it is. So, get out of the way here. Get that door closed back up. There it is. That's my uh, Simplex 2001 vintage fire alarm control panel. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know I wanted to make it just because, again, this is a panel I've had for quite some time. It's one that is becoming very, very rare. There aren't very many of them left in service. Uh, there aren't too many collectors who have these either. So these are becoming a rare breed and they, they really are quite cool panels. It's a neat piece of history to have. So, yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I would be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. But, with that said, I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the links in my description. Thank you, and have a great day.